Welcome back to this tutorial series on how to implement a basic quest in Divinity Original Sin 2. Um, this episode, it should be rather short. What I want to do is I want to clean up a couple of issues from character creation that uh, I wasn't aware of when we did it the last time. There were some issues with it that were discovered in multiplayer that I had not tested at the time. And then when I did, I found a couple of uh, bugs in it. And secondarily, um, I want to go back and revisit the structure of our goals in our story script because we've kind of been cheating a little bit. We've been taking shortcuts in terms of how we organized our goals because it wasn't very important at the time. And if you were to do something like try to play this mod in multiplayer, you would run into issues. In fact, even if you use real character creation, it's possible you could run into some issues based upon some timing problems in the way that we've organized our goals. And we really should start using best practices as soon as possible. We don't want to formulate bad habits. And if I were to redo this whole tutorial series again, um, I might change some things up and do things a little differently. But let's correct them now as soon as we can and have a better mod for it. So to begin with, let's look at what the problems were in the character creation script itself. I'm going to open this up. We put our character creation script over here at character creation. So the first thing we're going to look for, we're going to put our cursor over here in the KB section. We're going to do a control F in order to do a search. And we're going to look for a procedure called proc assign dummy and the rest of it is to user, but that should be enough. So if you remember when we looked at character creation, there are some dummy characters that are sitting there in the character creation level. There are four of them. And as character creation begins and you have, first of all, the host begins the game. He gets the uh, first dummy assigned to him. And then as other users connect, um, they get the next available dummy assigned to them. Now if we come down here, there was a little bit of a, an error in the logic. Um, it, down here it says proc assigned dummy to user and then it says and not db available dummy. So this is checking whether or not there are no entries for db available dummy. And this is the exact opposite of what it should be doing. If we remember what happened in the first place, way up here, the first thing that happens is the we created these DB character creation dummy entries for each dummy that was in the character creation level. So you have a DB entry for each one of them. And the first thing that happens is in this KB section, it takes each one of those and adds it to an available dummy list. So this is creating a list of all the dummies that are out there and says they're all available. And for whatever, re well, I know what the reason is. They copy and pasted some code from Origins in order to implement this, and Origins used the DB available dummy database entry a little differently. They never initialized it with all the available dummies. Uh, therefore, they didn't run into this problem. But anyway, down here at line 243, uh, we want to get rid of that not. We also want to get rid of it on the next one here because we want to make sure that this succeeds when there are, are dummies available because this is what's going to uh, allow um, new characters joining to get dummies assigned to them. Uh, from here on out it should be fine. Those are the two lines. If you have downloaded the character creation template file after October 9th when the third version was uploaded, you should be fine. These changes should already be in that template file. This is only if you are following along real time and you downloaded the character creation uh, template zip file before October 9th and are still using that code, you would have to come in and make these changes. So we're gonna do that. So we're gonna save and then we'll go ahead and do a build and reload. We should be good to go from here for multiplayer, if so desired. 
So the next problem I want to address in our story so far is execution order. If you remember before we had um, gone over the fact that when the story begins the goals are sorted in alphabetical order and then they are just run in order and when you have sub goals underneath a goal they will not initialize until the parent goal completes. So what's the problem here in character creation? Well character creation in our LDC journal for instance are underneath the same parent and imagine if in LDC journal we had defined something like uh, imagine if we used a set on stage call. If we were to set it off stage it would no longer render, it would not appear in the game the AI, for all intents and purposes, the object has been removed from the world. The game is not going to do anything with it. You can set it on stage later if you want to, but imagine we were to set something off stage here. One thing that we were finding in multiplayer is if you set something off stage after character creation, you would come to your level and you would find, lo and behold, that those characters that you set off stage in the init section here ended up being on stage after all. Now why was that? Well, let's review what's going on here. When character creation begins, this will initialize, and then sh shortly thereafter, LDC Journal will initialize. If we were to set something on stage, let's just choose uh, one of our objects here. Uh, we had, for instance, Sven. If we were to set that to zero, this is trying to set him off stage. So this is going to execute while you're in character creation. But what's the problem with that? When you're in character creation, what level are you in? This is the level that you're in. In character creation, you're in this sys character creation A level. After you're done character creation, you exit that. And then your party teleports to the next level that you want to go into after character creation. For us, it's the start level. So after character creation, you would teleport to the start level. Your start level would load, and when it loads, it would take the information from your level here. It would say Sven. There's nothing in his properties that tell him to be off stage. So it would go and it would just place him in the level, in the location that we have him here, and he would he would be basically overriding whatever we tried to do back here. This was trying to set him off stage before the level was even loaded. So we had an order issue. We would have been setting him off stage, entering character creation, then when the level was loaded, he'd just be put on stage again because that's where he belongs in the level. So how do we prevent this? Well, for best practices, what you usually want to do is from your start level, from your st from the start goal, you want to create a new sub item, and you want to create a, an item basically with the same name as your level. We're going to call it start level. And from here, we want to copy what this sandbox does. This sandbox gives us a good use case for what we should do if we open this up, right? In here, it creates a DB entry for check level start, um, and it gives its name, template sandbox. And then it says, if region started, goal completed. What this is basically going to do is, you see this underbar sandbox goal here? By creating this parent goal, and then adding this text where it says, if region started, template sandbox, then goal completed, it's going to hold off any initialization that happens in this underbar sandbox until the region is started. So this code here is not going to execute until you actually load the level sandbox or template sandbox in their case. And we want to do the same thing. If we have goals that are pertinent to a particular level, we don't really want them to initialize until the level is loaded. So we're going to copy what the sandbox does here. 
into our start level goal and we're just going to change the name in each section should probably cut and paste just to keep it safe and clean and then once again Save. Yeah, we have an error. What do we do? Oh, of course, we we're messing around up here. So let's get rid of that. Okay. Now that we have the start level, um, it's probably not imperative, but since none of our journal stuff occurs until we get into our start level, we might as well move this down here. We can just drag that, and you'll notice this will now put the LDC journal as a sub-goal under start level. So now none of this will occur until after the level has loaded. Right? When we go back here, if region started, goal completed. Sub goals do not initialize until their parent goal is complete. So as soon as the level loads, the goal will complete and the LCD journal will now start. One other thing I noticed is we can get rid of this. This was temporary before we did character creation, so we're going to get rid of that and clean things up a little bit. And we'll just build and reload one more time. And we'll make sure this works in both contexts, both the editor and in the game client as a sanity check. And then we will have a much better organized and safer, cleaner story layout. And if we go over here, looks like everything's working, the journal still works. We can come over here. So far, so good. And we'll try this in the game client. We'll just take the first character offered to us. And we can see we're here. Looks like the journal is still working, all the other mechanics that we expected. So it looks like this is good. Okay, and just for fun, I'm going to try this in multiplayer now. I've started up two clients. This is my first one, and uh, I have my second one over here. You can see it. I'll just drag it into the screen here. So I'm going to start this one. And you'll see it's waiting to start the game until I start on this one. So we got a nice happy dwarf couple. And we get in, we see we have the female dwarf here on my first screen. You can move her around. If I switch over to my other screen here, you can see I have my male dwarf and I can move him around. So you can see that uh, multiplayer is indeed working here. And with that, uh, we're going to close out this video. Uh, going to try to keep them a little bit shorter. Some of them have been getting on a bit long. I intended these to try to be maybe 25 minutes or so or less. And uh, now that we've reorganized things, cleaned it up a bit, we are actually going to move on to encounters like I've been promising for a while. So hopefully all of these little changes to character creation haven't uh, confused you too much and you've been following along okay. And most importantly, hopefully it will pay off into the future as we have a better organized module going forward.